Everybody, Cam Biker here, and it's time for round two of these levers. If you saw my video the other day, you'll uh, know that when I came to put the brake lever onto the Kawasaki, I uh, started unscrewing or unbolting this lever, and the bolt just sheared off, or the, the nut came off, and the bolt split into bits. Um, so I had to send off four. Uh, a new nut and a new bolt or pivot pin including delivery the princely sum of nine pounds which is far too much but what can you do eh? so I'm gonna have another go at these and uh, hopefully this time it will be successful now the first job this time is gonna be dead simple because there's no bolt to undo just this pin So there is the old pin, sheared. Tell you what, I'll take this out first because it's just going to slide out now. Simple as that. Just slides out, there's my old lever. And let's compare that with a new one. So you can see exactly the same shape, but obviously a different colour and this one has an adjuster. Now let's compare the pins and you'll see what happens. So there is my old pin, there is my new one. You can see how much was sheared off. So that's the brake lever off. To put the brake lever, the new one, back on is almost as simple a job. Okay so there's this is the uh, bracket that we're going to be putting the brake lever into. Nice and easy. Just slides in there. You see there's this button here. That button goes inside that slot, just there. Um, and essentially that's it. Just got to make sure we don't break that off. Now before we put it all back together again, just to make sure nothing rusts and everything moves nice and freely I uh, need to put a bit of uh, grease a bit of lithium grease into the hole where the pin will go so just to refresh that a bit so uh, let's do a bit of that bit in there will do nicely should do the job and then we'll just slide it back into position Oop, and get the new pin so just need to make sure everything slots in nicely where it came out in the first place and then slide it so that everything lines up in. And now the pin, you see there was a thread on the end, that actually screws in first with a whole one nanometer of torque. So I don't really need a torque wrench for that. That's that in place. I'm not going to give it any more than that. It doesn't need any uh, strength in it at all. That. So let's show you what's underneath. So you can see here, 
is the bottom of the ball. So that was a bit that was sheared off, absolutely flush just there. So I've got my new two pound nut, hmm. which just needs to be put on there. And then I'll just nip that up a little bit, but not much, with a spanner. Okay, that's one lever complete. And it's adjustable, so let's bring that one in a bit. A little uh, adjuster thingy dingy. Perfect. So the next job, this side. So the clutch side is the real reason I need new levers. You can see when my hand's on there, and it's obviously worse when I've got gloves on. That's a full stretch of my fingers, so I'm right on fingertips for the clutch. So I need the adjusters to be able to uh, sort that out. So we'll start uh, taking that one apart. Now the first thing I'm going to do with this um, is loosen off the cable. I've seen some videos where people don't do it, some pe where people do do it, and it looks easier when it's loosened off, so let's give it a loosen. Get a bit of free play in there because this cable here is going to have to come out of that lever. And then we've got a similar arrangement. We've got a bolt hidden away in there. That looks like a real pain to get to. That I need to get off again a 10mm bolt. So I'll get that with me spanner and see how I get on. I've had to go with my uh, child size socket set for this one. So let's give it a turn and pray that it's not as tight as the other one was. Oh, that's lovely. Straight off. Perfect. Removing this one's a little bit different. Have to get that bolt up. That's a captive bolt on the Z750. I get that out. Uh, but it should still be quite easy, so we're wiggling the lever out. And the difference is this cable here is going to get in our way. And it seems a grip is going to get in the way too, so it's a bit of jiggery pokery needed. Okay, took a bit of wangling, but I've got the um, lever out. If I turn it over, hopefully you'll be able to see on there, zoom in a bit. That's where the clutch cable is, so you just need to twist it around, give it a jiggle. And that should, hopefully, give it a helping hand, pop out, cable, uh, lever removed. Now then, the old lever has a metal bushing in the pivot, which my new levers don't have, so I have to pop that out of there. A bit there, and that goes into the new levers. The new lever. I've popped a bit of grease in there, and it should just slide in nicely. Oh, maybe I popped a bit too much grease in there, but you know, we'll have a bit back down the middle, keep everything rust free, and then I need to reverse the process. I need to put this back on the bike. So it should be a simple case of. He says simple. Never is, is it? That needs to go back into the little holder. Pretty hard to show you. That's quite tight, so you have to trust me. You know, you, know, you want to. There we go. So you see, that's the. Hopefully, you can see that there. The little end bit of the cable now into the brake, just here. 
and I can turn the entire lever over, slide it into the rough, roughly the right position, get the cable out, so now the cable slots back in nicely, and now it really is just a case of the reverse procedure for putting the brake lever back in. And before I do that though, wipe my hands a bit, and then I'll just show you one last thing that's important. And that is, this bike has various sensors. So it has a sensor on the clutch, it has a sensor on the uh, gear, gear position, and a sensor on the side stand. So that various combinations of those will stop the bike from starting. So for example, if you've got the side stand up, but you're in gear and you haven't pulled the clutch in, then the bike won't start. And the reason it knows not to start on the clutch lever is this button here. See that button there? It's quite tricky to show you there. So the clutch, this part of the lever, pushes that button when you pull the clutch in. That means that if you break that button off, well, it won't stop you from starting the bike, but it will be a problem because it will no longer detect things. So in some cases the bike won't start, you'd have to make sure your stand was up and you're out of gear, which you should probably be doing anyway. But, um, you know, there's no point in breaking it. So you just got to be careful when you're putting this back on, because it's going at a funny angle. You don't want to catch the side of that button and end up snapping it off. So I'm going to be watching for that as I do this. So, let's try and wobble this thing back in again. And keep an eye on that button while I do it. It's kind of a up and down wiggle, as well as wiggling it side to side. And there it goes, it snaps back in. And now, I just need to line up that hole, get my captive bolt back, drop that through. So that's it in its final position. Get my nut. Nut. By the way, I didn't uh, show it, I did it off camera, but I have greased the inside of that uh, bushing as well. Which is why my bolt underneath here is absolutely coated in goo. And then again, just lightly putting the nut back on. Goo. Uh, because it's five newton meters, which is tiny, and I don't want to have to take this off in the future and do to myself what somebody did to me last time round. So I'll just hand tighten it, just so there's no slack in there at all, and I'll do nicely. Now then, there is one more job I need to do before I uh, claim this is finished, and that's tighten up my clutch cable again. So I slackened it off so I could get that cable out easily. I'll measure that properly and make sure I've got the proper free play later on. Let's see how that compares. So before I could only just get my fingers on, kind of like that. And now, much better. And that's actually on the highest setting that I can turn this all the way into there. And if I've got little pixie hands it would work as well. So what I'll probably do is set it so that it's in a similar position to the other bike. So the clutches seem to engage at the same point. Quite pleased with that. Quite pleased with that indeed. There's the final result. So gold levers to go with the gold pinstriping on the bike. I could have had green but I thought that was a bit much. Tosh said it should take about 10 minutes to do this. I think it's taken me about 15 or 20 but that's because I was being extra careful and videoing it. Um, but uh, yeah, very pleased with the results. Nice new adjustable levers both sides. And uh, get the old lever back. In terms of usefulness, the adjustability is brilliant. In terms of looks, I think they're a lot more stylish. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe. And I'll talk to you all again soon.